Nestled in the heart of downtown, Las Vegas High School is the very first high school to be built in Las Vegas. The school opened its doors in 1930 and has educated local high school students for nearly a century up until 1993 when a new school campus was built on the east end of Sahara Avenue to carry on the proud name and tradition of Las Vegas High School. After 63 years of operation, the old downtown campus was renamed the Las Vegas Academy for the Performing Arts. Recently, the campus had the proud honor of being listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The listing recognizes the school's architectural significance and its importance to the history of education in Las Vegas. Many students who attended Las Vegas High went on to become very prominent Nevadans, including Senator Richard Bryan, who took some time to take a walk down memory lane with us at Las Vegas High. In our youth, uh, it was the only high school in town. This was really the center of our universe. There was no junior high or middle school. When you graduated from the eighth grade, it was a rite of passage. You would become a wildcat. Senator Richard Bryan graduated from Las Vegas High School in 1955. He stands in front of the renovated sacred senior squares that once were painted at the bottom of the school's steps. Well, it started long before my time in the early 40s, and each art class would paint a square, and the square would kind of symbolize, for example, in my high school, the class of 55, which is over here, that was our theme, the thespian. A theme. And then the class of 56, that was Rock Around the Clock, Bill Haley, uh, and uh, so each yearbook had a theme. Over time, the squares painted on the ground became faded and barely legible. This is when Las Vegas High alumni had the squares replicated and put in this mounted frame to preserve the rich tradition. At lunchtime, uh, you would see the, the guys who were going steady walking hand in hand with their girlfriend up the front steps. The guys that had a souped up car, they kind of to drive back and forth to get the attention of everybody. It was just a marvelous experience. We had wonderful teachers and uh, it was a different time, but uh, I loved it. As we walk through the main hall of the old school Senator Bryan and I both attended, we reflect on the good times and traditions that make the school so special. Down here was uh, Mr. Rupert said he was the boys' health teacher, and everybody called him behind his back, Rupert. <laughs> Rupe. He was livid. He couldn't control it. So him. mad. <laughs> Vegas High has made its mark in the history books, including the 1944 football team that went undefeated earning a place in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Four members of the team, Myron Levitt, Bill, Wildcat Morris, John Mendoza, and Tom Bell, went on to become prominent Las Vegas attorneys and judges. No team scored against uh, the Wildcats. No team got a successive first down. A few years later, in 1947, the Las Vegas Rhythmettes Dance Troupe was formed. The group was so exceptional, they appeared on national television. The Ed Sullivan Show, that was primetime television, and, and the Rhythmettes went there. And so every girl wanted to be a Rhythmette, and uh, Miss Stuckey was the director, and it was, it was tough to get in. In 1953, Rancho High opened, and in 1957, the Sir Herkimer Bone football game began, a tradition that still lives on to this day. Each year, the two rival schools play for the bone, a trophy made from an old soup bone and kept in the Victoria School's trophy case between games. Senator Bryan jokes that he wasn't coordinated enough to play football, but he sure could run fast. One year, I dropped the baton, but I, I threw it forward, and literally, I was out breaking a stride. I was able to pick it up, and, and we finished. But those are great memories. Walking through Fraser Hall brings back other great memories. Fraser Hall, built in 1949, is named after former principal and Las Vegas Union School District Superintendent Maud Fraser. In 1956, UNLV had its first office here in Fraser Hall, and college classes were held on the campus. There were some business classes or something here. Senator Bryan served as Nevada's Attorney General before being elected governor and finished his political career as a United States Senator. But there is one race, he recalls, that he did not win. Rosenbaum was on the band, 
and he did effective campaigning here in Iowa. Senator Bryan may have lost that student body election, but he's still very proud of his speech he delivered to the student body that year. Students were challenged to touch electric eels that were brought into the assembly. I, I'll do it, <laughs> yeah. And, it, and I touched a little shock, but it gave me a great opening line. I said, I hope in the few minutes that I have that I can electrify you with my few words as I just was, brother eels. <laughs> that was <laughs> So many great memories to talk about as we walk through the historic campus that occupies more than 25 acres in downtown Las Vegas. The school gym remains almost exactly as it was when first built. Each year Loyola and uh, the University of Nevada would play a, a couple of games here. Senator Bryan remembers trying to help out at one of those games by letting one of the Loyola team members know it was time to get on the court. I'm 15. I knock on the door, open it up, and he looks at me and growls. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah. Kid, I know what time it is. <laughs> the main academic building and the gymnasium were first listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1986. In 2021, the listing was enlarged to include Fraser Hall, and now the entire campus is included in the listing. The designation recognized the school's place in Nevada history and helps preserve its unique past. A unique past so close to Senator Bryan's heart that he's talked of a desire for his funeral to be held in the Las Vegas High School gym. I think if I can get it in the uh, old Las Vegas High School gym. For Discover Our History, I'm Sue Levitt.